very first riff a lot of beginner rock guitarists learn is this one right here. <laughs> What I just played is a simplified single note version of Deep Purple's classic Smoke on the Water riff, played purely on the low E string with a couple of fingers. Yep, that's a pretty cool, my first ever riff for any rock guitarist to learn. That said, my friend, there's a minor upgrade we can apply to this Smoke on the Water riff that's still darned easy to play, and it sounds way, way cooler. This version right here. Yes, that's more like it. So for all of you future rock guitar heroes who are just starting out, you now have a choice to make regarding the first riff you learn to play. You can either learn this one, which is pretty cool sounding. Or the upgraded version, which is even cooler. And as I've already said, this upgraded version isn't that hard to master, I promise. Yes, my friend, when you first start learning the guitar, there's nothing more satisfying than being able to play a famous riff well enough that everyone recognizes it. It's inspiring. Hey, it makes you feel good, like you're a real guitar player. And that's who this lesson is for, by the way future guitar heroes who are just starting out on their intrepid journey. Greetings, fellow traveler. My name is Nick with Sweetwater, and I will be your guide for this short section of your exciting six-string trek. I have the good fortune to teach guitar at the Sweetwater Academy in the evenings, and a bunch of my beginner students come into their first lesson invariably being able to play the first version you've already heard, because they learned it from the good old YouTubes. <laughs> This is often called the 035, 0365, 035, 30 way of playing Smoke on the Water on the low E string. In fact, I've even seen it as a meme. And it's an incredibly common, my first ever riff for a vast multitude of fledgling rock guitar players. After all, it's pretty darn simple to play, it sounds cool, and it's also one of the most famous hard rock riffs of all time. I mean, everyone, and their brother and sister knows it. Here it is again on the low E string, a little slower. 035, 0365, 035 again, and finally 30. And as you've probably gathered already, each number represents the corresponding fret number on the low E string you have to play, with 0 or O meaning the open string, like this. There it is, zero or O. Three is fret three, which happens to be the first dot on my guitar, which is pretty handy. So fret three on the low E string, and there's my first dot. Then the next number five is fret five, which happens to be the second dot on the guitar, hurrah! So we've got this. Fret five on the low E, second dot. And then six is obviously fret six, which is one fret higher than fret five, so. That's fret six. So you could almost say we're following the dots. Well, kinda sorta. So just to recap, we just do this. 035. 0365. 035 again. And finally, 30. And then all of a sudden, hey presto, we have the instantly recognizable famous riff quite literally at our fingertips. Here it is a little faster. Yup, that rules. It's definitely a great first riff. And like I've already said, it gives you a wonderful feeling of satisfaction when you can actually play it. It makes you think, yeah, I'm a rock guitar player. Gosh, darn it. 
The only trouble with this version is this. If you try and play it along with Deep Purple's recorded version, it just doesn't sound right. In fact, it's not even close, darn it. Let's try playing along with the recorded version, shall we? And hear exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh dear, that sounded awful, didn't it? In fact, the musical term for what just happened is this. Yikes! Yes, my friend, sadly, even though our low E string single note version sounds totally righteous by itself, it just doesn't work with the recorded version. As you've heard, it's not even close. Ugh. Now, why doesn't it work, do I hear you ask? Well, it's because of this. We're playing it in the wrong darn key, that's why. We're starting on an E note, but the deep purple version starts on a G. I repeat. Done. But don't fret, there's a solution. And even better, we can still keep our 035, 0365, 035, 30 pattern intact. And better still, we can still use those four all important open string notes. And this is how we're gonna solve it. First off though, let's quickly recall the note names of our six open strings. They are from low to high or thick to thin, E, A, D, G, B, E. So logic dictates if we go to our G string, our good string if you will, that means our starting note, our so-called zero note, is now a G. And that's the note we want to start with to be in tune with deep purple. Nice. So if we now do our 035, 0365, 035, 30 pattern on that string, we should be in the same exact key as the deep purple version. Let's try playing along with the track again, shall we? And see if we're indeed right. Yes, that's more like it, but hold on for a second. We're still not quite there yet. The trouble is, while our open G string version sounds okay when we play along with the track, when we play it by itself, it sounds, uh, maybe a hair wimpy. Let's check it out. <laughs> Nah, even though it's in tune with the track, to be honest with you, I still prefer the low E string version. This one right here. Why? Because it's got some oomph. Like I said, the G string version is pretty darn puny. Nah, nah. Hear what I mean when I play them back to back? Uh, Mr. Blackmore is definitely playing something that sounds a lot beefier. And he's not just playing single notes either. Now at this point, some people will say the easy fix is all you've got to do is play the riff as power chord starting on G, which is the third fret on the low E string, like this. That's definitely close to sounding, but to be honest with you, as opposed to lying, in my opinion, going from playing single notes to power chords is a huge jump for a beginner. In addition to being a lot harder to play, it's still not 100% correct to my ears. Yep, Mr. Blackmore's version is just plain meaner sounding. But wait, once again, don't fret. There's another way that still follows our trusty 035, 0365, 035, 30 pattern. And that's the upgraded version I played at the very start of the video, namely this one. Granted, it is a little harder to play than the single note version, but a challenge is good, right? After all, we do want to get better, don't we? So that's now your quest, your goal to play this. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So let's learn it. And as I've already said twice, it's easy. It must be, I can do it. Now, as you may have noticed from what I just played, we're going to learn to play our good old 035, 0365, 035, 30 pattern on two strings, not just one. We're still gonna follow our well-trodden path, but this time we're gonna be playing it on the D and G strings together. 
And as luck would have it, these two strings are next door neighbors, so it's not too bad. We're just gonna have to make our pick strokes a little bit bigger. That's all, just like this. Don't make them too big though. Remember, we only wanna hit the D and G strings. We don't wanna hit the B string inadvertently as well. This is good. This is uh, not so good. Too happy sounding. Now to make this easier, I recommend you rest your picking hand pinky or maybe even the pinky and the ring finger of that hand on the body of the guitar like I'm doing right here. Why? Because it anchors your picking hand and makes the two string picking motion easier to control and more accurate. That's why, just like this. Now, if you've been watching carefully, you can see I'm only hitting the string with down stroke. So in between each down pick, I'm hopping over the two strings to get back to the start again. So it's pick, hop, pick, hop, and so on. Just like this, pick, hop, pick, hop, pick, hop. This might feel weird and awkward at the start, and you might even end up hitting strings you don't want to at first, but don't fret, stick with it and you will get it, I promise. Remember to always apply the three sacred Ps, patience, practice, and perseverance. If you do so, you'll master this new picking skill in no time. And don't get discouraged. Remember, you've never done this before, so give yourself a little bit of time. To get used to this new two string picking motion, I recommend you just do it over and over again on the open strings without fretting any notes, just like this. Start slowly and build up speed slowly as well. Apply the aforementioned three Ps and you'll get it. Please remember, playing the guitar is not a race despite what some clowns might think or say. Take your time and before long, you'll have this down. Once you've got this new picking approach down, it's now time to bring your fretboard hand into the game and master the riff. To play three on the D and G strings together, we just lay our first finger flat on those two suckers just behind the third fret like this. And then we do our two string pick. Pretty easy, right? Now to play the five, we do the exact same thing, but this time with our third or ring finger just behind the fifth fret like this. So we place our finger there and then do our two string pick again. This means our opening 035 is this. Once again, this is new to you, so it might take a while. So please don't get discouraged. Just make sure your fretboard fingers are flat and they're across the D and G strings and also just behind the fret in question. So please take your time and also be patient. Remember, once you get this 035 pattern down, you can actually play 11 of the 12 notes that make up this riff. You've got this. So once you've mastered 035, all we've got to deal with now is six. And we're going to do this again with our third finger, but this time behind the sixth fret on the D and G strings like this. That's it. Once you've got that down, now it's time to string our dear old 035, 0365, 03530 pal together, and we've got it. Here it is slowly on two strings. 035, 0365, 035 again, 30. And all together a little bit faster, with some distortion, of course. And even better, it not only sounds great with the recorded version, now it sounds exactly like it. Nice. In fact, let's check it out. Don't get me wrong, I like this. That said, I love this. So 
So remember the three sacred Ps, namely patience, practice, and perseverance, and you'll have this right in no time. Oh, and once you've mastered this, if you really want to challenge yourself, try to fret the two six fret notes with your pinky. Remember, you've got four fingers, so why not use them? Use this bad boy. He will come in use, I promise. So have fun with this great riff, and good luck on your guitar playing journey. I'm out. So see ya. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment nicely, please, and also subscribe. Click here for more videos like this. We'll start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. <laughs>